You coming? Oh, I see. You're trying to pull me away from your parents. Okay, okay. See, when I, when I go and visit other people's houses, I actually enjoy... Even, even at that age, even at a middle school age, I actually enjoyed talking to my friend's parents a lot. Um, which I guess is really unusual. I don't know, just because I just feel like it's the polite thing to do. And more often than not, like, my friend's parents end up being really cool. Um, so... Okay, Kobe, I mean, you don't want to just hang out and just chat with your parents. Even when I have friends over, and again, maybe this is really unusual, but even when I had friends over, I actually really liked, you know, hanging out with my friends with my parents. And maybe part of it's because, you know, my mom is a big social butterfly, and so it's actually a really pleasant conversation when my mom and is having a conversation with my friends and, and myself. Um, and my dad also can be really funny, too. So, I don't know. I'm sure that's probably not the norm, but, you know... What can I say, like, I always enjoyed spending time with my family, with my friends. In fact, I feel like my friends end up having a more fun and more pleasant time when we do. But Cove wants me all to himself, and I understand that. The question was quiet, but you heard it clearly. You smiled, pleased that he asked, and nodded in the affirmative. Cove I turned fully and made his way down the hall. Have fun, you two. We'll call you when food's ready to go. With that, you followed after Cove. The two of you made your way down to the hall. This was the first time you were invited to see Cove's room. You'd visited Cove's room before, but only rarely. Going over to Cove's room was a standard occurrence for you nowadays. Um... I don't know. Does it really matter? Um... I'm gonna say going over to Cove's room was a standard occurrence for you nowadays. I would like to, if we're this close, that's what makes sense. Cove got to the door first, opening it and stepping inside. You joined him. There was a mat on the floor in front of the door. As you stepped over the threshold into his room, you felt the crunch of sand beneath your feet. Oh, I love Cove's room. Look at all the seashells. That's a really cool collection. And I love his bed too. Wow. these. And his aquarium? Good gravy! <laughs> Cove's parents are... Cove's... At least Cove's dad is well off to be able to have a room as nice as this. My room now, you know, my... I'm a full-on adult. My room now, my master bedroom now, does not look nearly as... as good as this, and not nearly as well furnished as this. At all. So... The sensation was nothing new to you, of course. Cove constantly came back to his room covered in sand, not bothering to clean himself off at the front door and got it all over his personal space. That's just how he was, a little bit of a mess. You hadn't heard Mr. Holden ever scold him for it, not like your moms would have if you've done it. You can sit wherever you want. Cove himself took a seat at the edge of his large bed, looking like the picture of comfort, left and left you to decide. You didn't sit anywhere, you sat down in the chair, you sat next to Cove on his bed. Yeah, I'll sit next to him on his bed. As soon as you sat down next to him, Cove grew tense. His back went stiff and he ducked his head away. I would like to believe we've done this before many, many times, but maybe now it actually feels awkward to him because he's only now realizing his feelings, so... He tried to hide a trembling smile. Oh my god. He said it under his breath, as if he doesn't want to hear, want you to hear. You obviously did, easily, since you were right beside him. You were nervous about that. You smiled comfortingly and you chuckled over it. You felt very charmed by his reaction. I'm going to feel very charmed by his reaction. Um, he raised his eyebrows. You both kept noticing the other's every move. You only shrugged back. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. You look like an open book. You know what? You're such a sweet guy, Cove. I'm going to say you're adorable. Or I'm going to say you're such a sweet guy, Cove. Clearly he hadn't expected a compliment. Something his somehow his flush grew worse, spreading all the way down his neck. He fumbled for words. I'm not, that's he gripped the blanket underneath him and searched for something more to say. Did you see my fish? I got some in a tank right there. 
Cove threw his, both his hands in front of him, direct your eyes towards his pets. He was trying to pr he was trying pretty poorly to change the subject or the topic. That much was clear. You decided to show mercy and allowed it. You started to watch the bright fish swim. There were a bunch of them floating to and fro in the open space. They stood out starkly against the green aquarium plants. How long have you had those fish? Yes. My dad bought them for me not very long after I moved here. I guess it's been years now. Wow, that's a long time. You peered carefully into the tank. The fish looked to be doing well. He must take good care of them. Most of them were small, but there was one especially big one. What are their names? Um, I don't name them. Well, not really. You lifted an, lifted an eyebrow at that. He continued the explanation sheepishly. I mean... Mostly I just call them things based on what they look like. Squirt for a small one, tangerine for a really little orange one, that sort of thing. I think that's adorable. I've had a lot of fish and I'm not good at coming up with names. You found that find that sound find that funny. You found that surprising. You find that relatable. I find that funny. Who knew what a we who knew that was a weakness of his? It was an entertaining revelation. Oh, a couple of them have other types of names. He pointed to a small orange fish orangish red fish. It was minding his own business away from the others. My dad named her Dreamcatcher, and that one's miss and that one's Mark. Mom came up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamcatcher versus Mart. I love that how different these naming conventions were with it are, are between his parents. Cove smiled to himself, his eyes reflecting the glow from the tank. You let other people name your fish? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. He then turned to you, tilting his head to the side. There was a considering look on his face. Do you want to name one? Yeah, I do. He, his smile grew a little at your enthusiasm. Cool. There's a few who don't have names right now. The newer ones. You can pick which which you want to name. Okay. He pointed at he pointed each of the recent acquisitions out to you. The first was the smallest fish in the tank. It was completely orange. Oh, I am all about orange. And zipped all over the place, running laps around the others. I immediately want to call him Nebo, Nemo. The second was slightly bigger and red. Its tail was dotted with black spots, which almost resembled freckles. The last fish was the biggest one. Its multicolored scales rippled under the bright light of the tank as it slowly made its way across the vast expanse. You went with... I'll go with the smallest fish only because it's orange, which is my favorite color. Cove only nodded at your answer, waiting on you to decide on a suitable name. You watched the fish as you chose closely. As you did, a name eventually came to you. Can I just type a name out, or do I have to pick from a list? Oh, okay. I wanted to call it Nemo. Oh, there we go. Type in your answer. Type in a name. Bubble. We're gonna call him Nemo. All right. It's Nemo. With that, his attention moved from you to the tank. He peered fondly at it and its inhabitants. You smiled proudly at Nemo as it swam through the tendrils of the plants, disappearing and reappearing soon after. I find it really cool. Really, really awesomely cool that you can name um, you can name, uh, fish anything you want, but, so here, I'm starting to have second thoughts, because as much as I really do like the name Nemo, I feel like I should name it something that's more significant to my channel, so, if I'm thinking orange, um, Clive, a lot of my characters in RPG games is named Clive, like in Mass Effect and in Dragon Age 2, you know, it's named Clive, so yeah, that, ha that has more significance than Nemo, is, although Nemo is one that I uh, am very fond of as well, so we'll call him Clive. All right, it's Clive. With, its, with that, his attention moved from me to the tank, he peered fondly at it and its inhabitants. You smiled proudly at Clive as it swam through the tendrils of the plants, disappearing then reappearing soon after. You notice then that Cove, plus Clive and Cove, that's another thing, Clive and Cove are also pretty similar, and I think that's fitting. You notice that then that Cove was sitting closer to you than he was before. He must have scooted over at some point during the conversation. This close, your shoulders were almost brushing against each other. Your heartbeat picked up a little at the realization. You know, I'm not allowed to have pets in my house, not even fish. The corner of Cove's lips turned down at that. That doesn't sound fair.
Oh, wait. That's what I said. You know I'm not allowed to have pets in my house, not even fish. The corners of Cove's lips turned down at that. That doesn't sound fair. It's not like fish would make a mess of your house or anything. You just gotta take care of their tank and feed them and they'll be okay. Yeah, I find that really weird. You can't even have fish as pets, because they're not... I don't see why what having a fish would... would why anyone would care if you're renting a place. I don't know why anyone would care about fish. Right? My mom's just can be stricter of the weirdest things. Oh, it's, it's, it's the parents. It's not, it's not the landlord. I thought it was a rule from the landlord, but it's a rule from the parents. Right? My mom's can be stricter of the weirdest things sometimes. I don't mind it too much. I get it. No, I mean, in real life, in real life, I would have said this. Because my parents definitely can be super strict over the weirdest things. They trust Elizabeth and me to go around the neighborhood alone, but they won't let us have a pet? It doesn't make sense. Maybe when you're even older, they'll let you. I don't know. They seem pretty against it. I think maybe because they figure that having a fish is a gateway, is a gateway drug to other pets. So if ultimately they don't want to have cats or dogs or anything that'll run around and mess up the house, they figured like best to not tempt fate by, you know, giving us even a fish. Maybe that's why. Your current conversation brought to mind a, a memory from years ago. You launched into it without any warning, earning you a brief confused look from Cove. One time, Lizzie Elizabeth came back from playing at the beach and just shut herself in a room. She only came down for food and, and then she ran back upstairs straight after. Straight after. It was kind of weird. My moms didn't think much of it at first though. But then that night, Ma went to her room to say goodnight and started screaming. Mom and I ran over to see what happened. Lizzie had this huge lizard in her arms. Cove's eyebrows rose at that, and he leaned forward in interest. Really? A lizard? Where'd that come from? Elizabeth said she saw it half buried in the sand and didn't know what what it was. Then she pulled it out and got the answer. So she brought it home again. Uh, she hid the lizard in her room for most of the day because she wanted to keep it. Mom and Ma were not happy. They worried about putting it out during putting it out during night. Uh, but she was going to have to let it go in the morning. Lizzie was really upset. She did bring it back to the beach eventually, but she wouldn't talk to anyone for days. When she did get over it, it was almost like it never happened. You laugh, thinking back to the, that time. Elizabeth had always been stubborn, but when she was younger, she forgot grudges quickly. Now it wasn't so easy. Cove had been quiet for most of the story, apart from the reveal of the lizard. He had a thoughtful look on his face. I can't even imagine what it would be like to have a sibling. You gave serious thought to his statements before you told him. It's fun. There are ups and downs. You're lucky to be an only child. It's a nice idea in general, but my sister is Elizabeth. I don't know how to explain what it's like. Oh. I can't imagine what it would like to have a sibling. I'm going to say there are ups and downs. It's fun to have her there when she wants to be there, but now Elizabeth barely feels like hanging out with me. Cove pursed his lips at the words, considering them quietly, considering them quietly for a while. Cool. But is it worth having a, but for someone like myself who has had a sibling, is it worth having a sibling over not having a sibling? I, me personally, 100% yes. I, I definitely appreciate it, despite some of the issues that my brother had growing up. I definitely would not want to be an only child. I definitely would have wanted to have a sibling. That's interesting. I think your family is cool. You didn't have much else to say, though while on the topic of your family, you considered your relationship with your moms, too. They were absolutely the best. You got along with your moms. You thought your moms were okay. You found your moms to be difficult to deal with. Um, I'm going to say, to be realistically, like, like I love my parents. I, I, I do. But, you know, I recognize that they have their weaknesses. And I'm not saying that that's, that doesn't make them the best in my eyes. But if I was really being honest, I'd be like, yeah, I got along with my moms. You had disagreements with them, but at the end of the day, you loved them and they loved you. Yeah, see, that, that, that is how I feel about my parents. Um, I definitely have disagreements about them. That was what really mattered. Well, well, say what you want about them, but at least your mom's never tried to pay someone to be her friend. Oh, snap. I never told. Maybe I can tell. I feel I can, can tell Cove that now. The thought prompted you to look over at Cove. He probably still didn't know what happened. that happened. You doubted that Mr. Holden mentioned it, and you never had. 
You wondered if you should tell him. It was a long time ago, but you're keeping a secret from Ko. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him now. You didn't tell him it was a bad time. You didn't tell him you weren't sure how he'd react. You didn't tell him secrets were meant to be kept. Uh, you didn't tell him you just didn't want to have to talk with you just you just didn't want to have to talk with Cove. I decided to tell him. You took a deep breath, steadying you keep a deep deep steadying breath to prepare yourself for the conversation. Now you just have to figure out how to tell him. Cove, I have something important to tell you. Hey, you wanna know something crazy? Please don't get mad about this, but um Please don't get mad about this, what? but Cove's brow furrowed at your uncomfortable tone. He turned to give you his full attention. About what? You stared into his bright ocean eyes. No, I'm gonna tell him the truth. I'm not just kidding. Go big or go home. And I don't want to go home because I want to eat dinner. So I'm not gonna go home. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the truth so I can get dinner. You told him the truth. So um, this was way back when you moved here, and and the first time I met your dad, actually. I find this really cool that again the game remembers and keeps track of the fact that you hadn't told you hadn't told him yet about what happened back when they were kids. I'm wondering if you keep it a secret at this stage, if you still might be given the opportunity to tell him again at the next, like, stage, at the next age. Um, your dad, he, well, he offered to give me $20 to be friends with you. Cove sat still, uncharacteristically. There was an unreadable expression on his face. His eyes seemed to look through you, and you didn't know what to do next. Then, without saying a word, Kof stood up from his bed in a single motion, and he just bolted right out of the room. Dude, how ma- It's been how many years? How many years? Come on, Kof. The least you could do is stick around for the conversation and talk to me, instead of going out and- uh, He's probably gonna confront his dad, which is so awkward, which is not what I wanted to have him happen. So, I'm a little disappointed that he just couldn't just- for something that happened that long ago, at least stay and finish talking to me first. Come on, Cove. For a moment, you didn't move a muscle. You were in shock. This was, oh no. Your senses quickly came back. You shot out into the hall after him. Cove. There was no response to your call. You could see Cove down the way. He had already sprinted back to the living room. His arms were stuck at his sides with his hands tightly balled into his fists. Oh, come on, dude. He might not have been facing you, but you didn't need to see his face to know how to know now to know now how he felt. Cove was furious. I get it. I get that it's a very upsetting thing. Um and he probably is might be also partially upset that I didn't tell him for the longest time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it. His parents were nearly finished setting the table. They greeted him, none the wiser of what was about to happen. Huh? Hey, what's up? When did you start running into the house? Are you famished? You were able to catch up in full and stand near Cove. Uh, the parents' words didn't even register in his ears. Their child was wholly focused on another matter. He was practically shaking. Cove took one more step forward and glared up at his father's face. You paid Vaughn to be friends with me? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I figured if I was going to tell him, maybe it was better now than when he's in high school. Mr. Holden froze. He looked like a helpless deer caught in the headlights. Seriously? Clifford? Are you serious? He whipped his head towards Kyra, his eyes wide and blinking rapidly. It was only one time. The admission elicited an aghast expression from his ex-wife. Mr. Holden raised his hands up to gesture defensively. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea when it happened. She covered her eyes with one hand. It was clear that her patience was frayed, but she was not so shocked anymore. Mr. Holden bowed his head, rubbing the back of his neck guilty. The fact that she accepted this as something he'd do so easily seemed to be the most crushing part. Cove just stood there, fuming silently during their little aside. His eyebrows furrowed painfully and his eyes trembled. You felt so bad for Cove. You felt so bad for Mr. Holden. You felt so bad for Kyra. You so felt bad for yourself. You felt so bad. I feel bad for everybody. You thought this. Yeah, I feel bad for everybody. Nah, none of this was good at all. It was terrible. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, but must have been only minutes, the tense silence was broken by Cove. I don't want to stay here. Oh. 
okay, we're gonna have this. I'm sorry that I spoiled dinner. I'm sorry that I spoiled dinner. Maybe I should have done this, like, at another time. But the game gave us this opportunity, and I figured... I figured we weren't gonna get another opportunity this at this age to say anything to him, so I figured I didn't want to risk not saying anything to him at this like with another scene um, during this during this age that we're at. So I figured uh, well, I'm just gonna do it. That immediately caught his parents' attention. They turned to him with twin expressions of worry. Hey, wait a minute, bud. You don't have to do that. There's still your room. We'll stay out of your way, I, I promise. Where could you go to, at, a at this time of day? It's almost night. No. I can stay with Vaughn. <sighs> he stormed out of the house without waiting for another response. You jumped as the door slammed closed behind him. Uh, I'll follow after Cove and make sure that he doesn't do anything that he'll regret later. I'll be back. I'll try to bring him back. You didn't even take the time to say something to his stunned parents. You ran after Cove, shutting the door more softly behind you as you left. You spotted him easily. Cove hadn't made it far. He just reached the middle of the road. Could you stop for a second? Are you okay? Okay, could you stop for a second? You might as well have said nothing. Cove didn't look back, nor did he answer you. <sighs> Cove stopped forward, going across the street without hesitance, towards your house. It didn't take long to approach the front door. You left it unlocked, so he yanked it open and then went inside with you. But then night fully came. And the two of you stood tensely together in the middle of your living room. The night really hadn't gone as you imagined it would. Oh, this is such a shame. I was really looking forward. I was really excited to having like dinner with the whole three of them, and I just completely messed everything up. Oh, the night real. But I mean, that's what the what it's consequences, guys. It's it's consequences, and I like that. I like that about this game that there are consequences. It would be really interesting if the entire scene played out way differently with us actually sitting down to dinner if I didn't say anything. Really interesting. Or if I had already told him. If I had already told him when we were little kids, then the scene probably would have still played out with us having dinner at his with his parents. The night really hadn't gone as you imagined it would. At least Elizabeth wasn't around and your moms are out. You had no idea how you would have explained the situation to them and you were sure Cove would have been up for that. He watched you from a distance. His expression wasn't hostile, but was not exactly welcoming either. Are you okay? What do you want to do now? I'm really sorry, Cove. You did the right thing by leaving. I don't agree with that. I don't think that was the right thing. Like, I think that you really should talk through your problems as much as possible. Obviously, if you are way, 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 way too furious and way too angry to the point that you can't have a constructive conversation, then yes, it is best for you to like pull yourself out of the situation as long as, as long as you eventually, in a timely manner, do come back and actually talk through the problem. Do you want to be doing this? You said nothing. Um, yeah, 100% don't agree with this. Um, unless, unless he, like I said, was fully angry, which I'm pretty sure he was. The only part that I don't, I'm not 100% sure is whether he intended on actually coming back and having an actual discussion with them. I'm really sorry, Cove, is, all, is what I'm going to say. Cove shifted so his back was to you. Then he crossed his arms over his chest. Are you mad at me? To your surprise, he actually responded. What? No. It's okay. I just, I wish I'd known before, but I guess there's never really a good time to bring up something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> when did you want me to tell you this? Sheesh. You're not the one who did anything. Oh, no. I, I, I didn't, I, you know, kept it a secret for this many, for this many years. His tone was clipped and insulting, though it was now fully clear that none of the negativity was towards you. And we're actually friends, aren't we? Yes, we are. That's why, like, I figured it didn't make any sense to just bring it up then and there when... Because I wanted him to feel like we actually were legitimately friends because we wanted to be friends, not because I was paid. That, not because I, you know, was paid to be friends with him. It would be hard for me to prove that right then and there, but I figured many years later it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But apparently it is a big deal right now. 
it doesn't matter if you took it or not. You wouldn't pretend for years just because of dad's money. Yeah, of course I wouldn't. You nodded your head furiously at that. If there was one thing you didn't want this revelation to do, it was to weaken your relationship. Of course we're friends. Cove seemed to appreciate your reassurance. The furrow in his brow eased a little. Yeah, we are. I'm definitely not mad at you. I should thank you for not letting him get to you, and for telling me it happened. My dad would never would have. He's always like that. He just does things. He doesn't ask or tell me about it or anything. Yeah, so here's the thing, Cove. What your dad did was kind of lousy. But, but, as hard as it is, you gotta also take into consideration not just what he did, but why he did it. Like, he he wanted you to make friends, and I feel like he had a, he had a concern that you would have a hard time making friends, um, and so he was, that was like his best idea to help you make friends. I'm not saying it was the smart idea, I'm not saying it was the right idea, because I don't know if I would want you know, to have my, you know, my children's friends be based on whether or not they accepted money from me. I don't think I would want those kind of friends. But, yeah, I mean, it's hard for Cove, I guess, at this age to realize that he's, he was doing it for a good reason, even though it might have been 100% stupid. And, and, you know, credit where credit is due for that. Um, he doesn't ask or tell me about it or anything. No, I get that that's frustrating and annoying. 100% get that. You know, when... when I, I don't like that either. When people do things that, you know, without really telling me about it or anything. Something like that without telling me. Cove threw his arms out. His features twisted in frustration. There already was the thing with my mom coming to stay with us for the summer out of nowhere. And that was supposed to be a surprise I'd find out about. It's very valid, Cove, 100%. Who knows what other thing he's done that I've never heard of. Does he even know how to think about what someone else might actually want? Yeah, your, your points are very valid as well. I'm not disagreeing with you either, Cove. Perfectly, perfectly valid. He paused. I'm just, I just like playing, I just like, I'm the kind of person who likes to play devil's advocate a lot. To a fault, I feel like. But I do. So... He paused to taking a panting breath, scowling. You continue to listen quietly. I'm sorry I have to deal with all that. You're right, it's terrible. It could be worse. Even if it didn't go well, your dad's only trying to make you happy. I'm going to try to defuse the situation because I feel like I need... If he's going to listen to anyone, he's, he's going to listen to me. At least I'm the closest person that could make a dent into getting through to him. So I might as well try to be some semblance of a voice of reason. Even if it didn't go well, your dad's only trying to make you happy. His eyes narrowed. You're right. Wow. Really? That... That was easy. I didn't expect it to be that easy. You're right. The worst part is, I know he doesn't do stuff for himself. He does things because he wants to make people happy. Cove does understand. He does. And his eyes are watering. Cove blinked rapidly, and you notice tears were gathering in his eyes. Uh, can we give him a hug? Can we give the boy a hug, please? Can't please, Vaughn? When he spoke again, his voice was heavy with emotion. But he just makes everything worse, and then he's really sorry, and it's, it's like it's your fault for not being happy that he was at least trying. I get that, too. That's also frustrating. No, I... 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 Oh, I get that. Oh, yeah. Like, because then you feel guilted... For, you know, the, the the person then, like, begins playing victim. Maybe not, like, purposefully playing victim, but it ended up being that way. 100% get this. This is actually, this actually, like, the events of these, of these, uh, the, this situation, actually, the flow actually is pretty realistic in many ways. And what if all his plans and always being so pushy? And what if all his plans and always being so pushy did change did change things? What things? Ko finally met your gaze, his bottom lip trembling. You realized then that he was referring to you and him. 